Hallelujah. Somebody alive this morning just to show forth the praise of my Father. Can you put your two hands together and celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Celebrate God this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have a gospel for you this morning. Psalm 91 verse 4 says that he will cover you with his feathers he under his shadow of his wings you will find refuge and his righteousness shall be your shield and your rampant i checked the meaning of refuge he says safety he says security i want somebody to be rested this morning that in 2019 no matter what comes your way god will be your feathers he shall be your covering and under the shadow of his wings you will find safety hallelujah
Hallelujah. 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 Let somebody who believes that the shadow of God over him or her will prevail in your 2019 shadow big hallelujah. Amen. Raise up your hands and let's just receive that shadow afresh. Receive that shadow afresh in the name of Jesus. Father, we receive the covering. Except you cover us this year, we're in trouble. But Lord, because you cover us, it will be well with us. Thank you, dear Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we do pray. I'm not going to be telling you something new. This is the first Sunday of your 2019. And I'd like you to just welcome the person next to you and say welcome to church. Welcome to the presence of God. And thank God that he has brought you here this year. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I'd like you to be seated for a while. I'd like to, for those who have not been coming to the services and to the things that the Lord had been working with us since the beginning of the year. You know, this is a year that had been declared along the direction. And we'll get into the will of God in Jesus' name. For those who had been here from the first night, this year, year 2019, has been declared as our year of divinely renewed strength. Isaiah 40, verse 29 to 31, our year of divinely renewed strength. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. That's what the Bible says. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. That will be your portion this year in the name of Jesus. This very first Sunday of the year, I'm bringing you a message, strength for the journey. Strength for the journey. Multimedia, you're going to help me. We're going to read through Genesis chapter 28 from verse 1 to 5, and then we'll read chapter, uh, from verse 10 to 16. Church, I'd like you to stand up and let's read the scriptures together now. Very important. The Bible says, And Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and charged him and said unto me, to him, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. Arise, go to Padan Aram, to the house of Bethuel, thy mother's father, and take thee a wife from thence of the daughters of Laban, thy mother's brother. Go, God Almighty bless thee and make thee fruitful and multiply thee, that thou mayest be a multitude of people. Verse 4. And give thee the blessing of Abraham to thee and to thy seed with thee, that thou mayest inherit the land wherein thou art a stranger which God gave unto Abraham. Verse 5. And Isaac sent away Jacob, and he went to Padan Aram unto Laban, son of Bethuel the Syrian, the brother of Rebekah, Jacob's and Esau's mother. Go to verse 10 now. Verse 10. We'll be reading from verse 10 to verse 16. And Jacob went out from Bethsheba and went towards Haran. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night. Because the sun was set, and he took up the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed. Somebody will have a dream this year in the name of Jesus. And he dreamed. And the top of it reached to the heavens. And behold, the angels of God ascended and descended on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I, the Lord God of Abraham thy father, and the God of Isaac, and the, and the God of Isaac, the land wherein thou liest, to thee will I give it unto thy seed." And thy seed shall be as dust of the earth. And thou shalt spread above to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all the places whither thou goest, 
and will bring thee again into this land, for I will not leave thee until I've done that which I've spoken to thee of. And see verse 16. And Jacob awaked out of his sleep, and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. Let us pray together. Our Father, we want to thank you for this very first Sunday of the year. I will bless you for what you are doing in the lives of your people. I want to thank you, God, for bringing us into this year, for how you want to take us on, for how you have actually started us, making us know that it will be well through the year to the end of it. In this service, I'm asking that, Lord, you will cause one person to know that, Lord, you are for him, you are for her, and that this year will be victorious in the name of Jesus. As we share the experience of people you have dealt with, let us see your dealing with us in this so that we can believe you and faith will arise in us. Thank you because you do this for us. In Jesus' mighty name, we do pray. Please be seated. I'll look at three things very quickly in this message. First, I'll just be making some very direct prophetic declarations. And I want to trust God that these declarations will be your portion according to the strength that God has promised he will give you this year. Then I'm going to look at year 2019 and liken it to the journey of Jacob that we have just read, so that each one of us can see our part and our portion in this life. Then I'll share a dream. I've been waiting on the Lord since the beginning of the year for this message. The whole of yesterday I sat in my office. It was just like, God, what would you do with your people? Yes, before I left the office yesterday, he told me, tell my people there will be strength for the journey. There will be strength for the journey. He said that so very clearly. But I was still waiting. What exactly do you want your people to know and to do? I woke up at 4 a.m. this morning with a dream. That dream will be part of this message this morning as we go along. But receive these declarations. I declare them in the name of Jesus. And I send from God to you that you will receive divine strength this year for the whole of the year. God will supply to you strength to be able to go through all that he has for you this year in the name of Jesus. Two, your spiritual life will receive a freshness, a fresh anointing of fire from God that will make you fruitful in this year 2019. Three, your ministry will receive a fresh fire right from the throne of God. The totality of your spirit, your soul, your body becomes ex- become excellently equipped to respond to the will and the purposes of God in year 2019. I didn't hear somebody say amen. In that prophecy that God has given to you, your spirit, soul, and body, it means that you will connect with God spiritually. Your soul, the books you read, the things that come to you, uh, you know, in this age of different information and news going around on social media and all that, what will your intellect, your emotion, and your will, the seat of your soul, will be things that God will ordain himself. And your body will respond to the will of God. Is there something cracking in your body? Is it your eyes? Is it your heart? Is it your blood system? Whatever it is, it is receiving the touch of God now for effectiveness and fruitfulness in this year 2019 in the name of Jesus. All your desires and purposes in God will be fulfilled in year 2019. And not sweet talking. I'm just coming to you to share with you the things that God is saying he would do to his people. Now let's look at what we get from Genesis chapter 28. As we liken that journey of Jacob to our journey this year 2019. Remember God said strength for the journey and you will have it in Jesus' name. If you look at the things that we learn from Genesis chapter 28, verse 1 to 5. The first thing you understand was that we were dealing in Jacob with a very important personality in the covenant family. Did you hear that? Jacob, when he was blessed by his father Isaac, multimedia, please put up again Genesis chapter 28, verses 1 to 5. He was charged to go. Go to verse 3. And God Almighty bless thee and make thee fruitful 
and multiply thee that thou mayest be a multiple a multitude of people verse 4 and give thee the blessings of who to thee and to thy seed with thee that thou mayest inherit the land which thou art a stranger the blessings of Abraham. Every time God connects to Abraham, he's connecting to a covenant. Did you hear that? So Jacob was the next string after Isaac on which the, 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 the covenant will come. I do not know how you stand today. But I want to ask you a question very quickly. Where are you in God's covenant? Today the covenant of God is established with men through Jesus Christ. And as many as come to God through him become like in the sense of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, people who know this eternal God and can take benefits from him. That is what the world does not know. Many go to church. Many do very religious things. But they fail to recognize that what really matters from flow of goodness and mercy from God really matters on a long-term basis unto those who are part of the covenant. The only thing that God will look at men and women for is to see that their sins are saved. Outside that, people are wasting their time. Yes, he could rain some rain on you. He could do some things to you. But don't make any mistake that that is the full blessing of God. You can only connect with God when you have known the mercy has shown through Jesus. As many as receive him, as many as believe in him, he gives them to become what? Sons of God, children of God. If you're here this morning, and this very early part of your 2019 that God is speaking to you, and you have not connected with God, please do enter into the covenant. As we start to relate with God and see what He's saying, we recognize that God operates according to covenants. That was why Isaac, who had said to learn this from his father Abraham, can pass it to Jacob and say, Your father's Father, believed in this God, and that God will make you fruitful. It is this God of Abraham that we are coming to this year, and he will make us fruitful. As many as know him through Jesus Christ. If you do not know Jesus, today is the day. I'm going to give you an opportunity very soon. Come before this altar, and come before the Lord. He's waiting to receive you. Another thing we see in the life of uh, Jacob here, he started on a journey that sought a wife. In verse 1, his parents told him, go away from here. Go and get yourself a wife. Go and look for a wife among the daughters. And you cannot get one among the daughters of Canaan. Go to the place where our own people are. I won't dwell too much on the theology of marrying in the right way and so on. At the right time, people start to know that. But what just occurred to me here is, this was an example of a man whose life was at the brink of expansion. Just like your life is right now as you enter into your 2019. You are taking steps. You may not know the extent of it. But what God is introducing you to is a place so large ahead of you that will expand and multiply you. I pray you will find it in the name of Jesus. I pray you will be expanded in every sphere that God wants you to in the name of Jesus. I pray that ignorance and foolishness and sin will not cheat you to enter into the fullness of God in the name of Jesus. Now, the third thing I see in the life of uh, uh, Jacob and this journey, underlying the journey was fear. Fear. Jacob had fear. And his parents also had fear. They probably would not have shown it as such until you look properly to understand it. Genesis chapter 28, verse 1, they were talking about looking for a wife for Jacob. But multimedia turned me again to Genesis 27. And let me see verse 41. Very quickly. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessings wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, the days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then I will slay my brother Jacob. Verse 42. And these words of Esau, her elder son, were told to Rebekah. And she sent and called Jacob her younger son and said unto him, Behold, thy brother Esau has touching thee 
doth comfort himself, proposing to do what? To kill thee. Verse 43. Thou therefore, my son, obey my voice, and arise, flee thou to Laban, my brother to Haran. Verse 44. And tarry with him a few days until thy brother's fury turn away. 45. Until thy brother's anger turn away from thee, and he forget that which he forgets that which thou hast done to him, then I will send and fetch thee from thence. Why should I be bereaved also of you both in one day? So you really understand why he started to run. Yeah, they told him to go and look for a wife, but he was actually to run away from danger and trouble. Many of the people that look at my face here this morning are running away from one trouble or the other. The one that the reality of the world today, an insecure world, a violent world, a world that has run away from God and so cannot respond to peace, unity, love, and therefore the solution, I mean, the, the, the option that is to men is violence, killing, destruction. That is there already. And I tell you as Nigerians, we have experienced quite much of that in recent times. But in the midst of these troubles, God will help you. In the midst of this trouble, God will save you. I'm talking about a nation where the, 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 the governor of a state is begging the people there not to run away. Yobe, are you reading the stories about that? The governor is begging people not to run away. How insecure. When the people around who we think should keep us don't even have the solution. We're in trouble if we have no other option. But people of God, your security is not a man. Oh, police, we thank you for all that you have been doing. Army and all that. But I tell you, if you put your hope and your plan in that, you are in trouble. But I bring a God to you today that says, fear not. I will be with you. I will keep you. I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. Amen? Underline the journey was fear. And then again, Jacob, in the midst of this, had to choose how he'd go. So when you look at verses 10 to 15, you see how Jacob had a personal encounter. That is what I'm pleading, I'm begging that you would connect with. Even if you have known the Lord. You know, there's a way we come to the point where we say we've known the Lord. So we come on Sunday, that's all. What else should I do? It cannot be business as usual this year. Our knowledge of the Lord must lead us deeper better into the things that God wants for our lives. So we read from Genesis chapter 28 from verse 10. How when that night this man slept, God who knew what he wanted made him start to see a revelation of him. A ladder appeared connecting his earth to his heaven. And may somebody's earth be connected to heaven today. May somebody see the vision of God Bringing help in the most unlikely and impossible places in the name of Jesus. That today you will see that ladder where angels are ascending and descending like Jacob saw. Meaning that God is interested in your situation. You are not alone. You cannot be afraid because God has said he will be with you. The only thing is that often... We behave like Jacob with all the provision of the power, of all the grace, the availability of God's presence. Jacob was just going like an ordinary man until he got to verse 15 of Genesis 28 and he could now declare, ah, God has been in this place and I did not know it. I pray your case will not be like that in the name of Jesus, that you will know God in your situation. That you have a personal encounter in the name of Jesus. In verse 16, he says, God was in this place. Thank you, verse 16. And Jacob awoke out of his sleep and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place and I knew it not. May you know God in your situation. Yours is different from mine. So how God will appear to you and reveal himself to you will certainly be different from how you do to me. But each one of us, We have a responsibility, each one, to find God in our situation. And our God is so big that he's ready to appear to each one according to our needs. Many times we are too full of ourselves. Many times we are too careless 
to recognize that God is interested. Many times, the things we knew of our own thinking and of our own preparations had clouded out faith, releasing to God and allowing him to have his way. This year must be a different year. It will be like starting afresh, learning like new babies. And I pray that when we come and God sees the hearts that are ready to receive him and to know him, he will release himself to us. Some people are not saying amen because you know they are still doubting. Should I really go all the way with God? But I tell you, you cannot go all the way with God and fail. You cannot go all the way with God and miss it. You cannot go all the way with God and be, and be put to shame. This year, choose to go with God. And what we say about going with God is the same simple thing. We may try to do all the razzmatazz of spiritual uh, activities. You know, I must go to this place to pray. I must pray at this time. I must do that. Whatever it is, pray. Hello? Pray. Oh, I must read my own Bible from uh, the King James edition or that. Also, what matters most is hear God through the revelation of his word. So the same simple things that I had when I was one day, two days old as a Christian, as Still the same things that God is telling me. In fact, I was sharing with some people here some few days ago. I got back to my house in Lagos two weeks ago, getting ready for the new year. A lot of things had happened. I'd been moving library to library and so on. There are many times I'll just remember one book or the other that God used to encourage me. When in 1977, I first gave my life to Christ. When things were hot, hot, as God started to reveal himself to me. Then I started to see those books again. I mentioned one of them. How many of us here have read the book by Leonard Ravenhill, Why Revival Tarris? Get that book and read it. I'll make my copy available if you want it. We cannot have the truth of the word of God revealed as we increase in understanding through reading of books like that and sit down as cold, lukewarm Christians who will not affect their world. Friends, this is the year of affecting our world for Christ. Not many don't understand what I'm saying. But let those who understand say amen because they agree to be so. I say this will be a year of affecting our lives for Christ in the name of Jesus. It's going to take a lot. It's not going to come easy. But when we pay the price he wants us to pray, to pay, he will tell us he has already paid the price that needs to be paid. He doesn't need to do anything else. All he needs is that we will enter into the place where he had wanted us to be all the while. All those times when I really desired fire to do the things of God, to walk in the ways of God and all that, I thank God for how far it affected my life. But I looked at years recently, and I said, Deulu, are you the same one that God dealt with like this? In 1978, 79, 80, 84, 95? I beg, there's work to do. <laughs> I know in my life there is work to do. But God will take us there in Jesus' name. But there's a fresh fire coming. We've been praying from the beginning of the, month, of the, of the, of the year. Many of you have not been coming. We prayed on Friday. God started to speak to our situations here. Giving specific declarations about the life of this church. How many of you are bothered about the church? In what way are you bothered about the church? If you don't put it in proper perspective to understand what God wants, you cannot be relevant in it. How many times do you really pray as God wants you to pray? Then we came praying yesterday at divine visitation. How many of you were in divine visitation? God started to talk about revival. And he is reviving us again. He is reviving us again. He is reviving us again. I thank God for the life of Jacob. I thank God for what we see from him. I am praying that at the end of my uh, life in year 2019, I would look back and I would really be able to say, Ah, God, you were in 2019 and I saw it. You were in 2019 and I knew it. And I don't just want to know it in December. I want to know the portion of God he will reveal in this January, right from now, and to February. March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Every day, 
that the portion of God to be revealed, I will see and know in the name of Jesus. And I pray that God will help you to, to know it. We are all in the journey together, and each one of us will make it in Jesus' name. Let me share my dream very quickly with you, because it now put everything in perspective for me personally. And I woke up this morning at 4 o'clock, I said, wow, God, I hardly dream. No, everybody dreams. But, you know, if they are not relevant or they are not needing to touch you in a particular place, you may not remember it. God forbid it, that is that you are sleeping too much, eating too much, and all the things that God wants to say you are not getting. But I don't bother myself when I don't remember dreams and all that. Someone will say, ah, it'd be like say, I dream, oh, but I don't remember. And they'll be running around. If it is the one that God wants to really say something to me about, I will remember it. I will know it. But dreams are very important, brethren. Look at the life of Jacob. Look at the life of Daniel. And see crucial solutions that came in the lives of kingdoms, in the lives of men. Turn around and so on. We cannot disparage dreams. May God give you good dreams. May God give you the right interpretation of the dreams. And may God make you change for the better. For his glory. This year, 2019, even with the use of dreams. I'm happy that I'm starting to get dreams early. I don't know what other dreams I dreamt before I got to this point. But let me tell you what happened. Just saw myself at that point. Like in the front of, you know, it was like one of these old 504 cars. It wasn't rickety. But I was in front of it now looking back. You know, when you look back there, you see a seat. You know? But that seat was not a seat where people would sit. It was a pot of meat. Good stew inside. And some other things that you can, you can put bread in, you can take rice in, you can do all that. And I was about just like understanding it, relishing it, inviting people to it. And there were some people, I'll talk about that later. But suddenly, this ugly looking creature, like a wall gecko, dropped and wanted to drop into the thing. But it got onto the side. And I was like saying, that is not what should be permitted around me here. Go and get it. And the moment I said it, because there were people around me, one dropped from the car. You know, it was like I was on the side of the driver and the person who was, the driving, who was on the driving seat who said, just said, yes, sir. He went out. And he was going to pull out the war gecko from what looked like, you know, a kind of a barrier between that seat and that place that would be the boots. Somebody getting what I'm saying? And that gecko certainly had to be dealt with. And I woke up. What do you do with your dreams? When God makes them so very clear, ask God for interpretation, they will tell you. Joseph looked at Pharaoh and he said, the dream, the interpretation of it does not belong to me. God will give Pharaoh an answer of peace. In your dreams, he will give you an answer of peace. Your dreams are, when God makes you have a dream, it is not to make you afraid. It is not to confuse you. It is to deal with the situation. And deal with it, you must. Because I stood up and I started to pray. My wife had woken up before that. So as she came, I said, I just had this dream. Oh, <laughs> we just started praying. Before she joined me, I started to put together what the Lord was saying. And as I prayed the more, God started to interpret it. God started to show what he was saying. The whole thing happened in a place that I could not connect with anywhere else. It was not like the car was on a street or in one town or so. It was just the car, me, and people with me. That at least I could talk to one of them, you go do that. And all the other pictures I'd given you. So God started to tell me, the place is not defined, and it can be any place from your home, your business, this church, this nation, the world you are in. I'm interested in that picture I've given you. There were many with me in the journey, but I cannot see the face of one person. Confirming again that God is saying it's not a particular place. If I'd seen the face of my wife, I will say, oh, this is for my family. Or my siblings, oh, this is for judiciators. Or in a business setting that I know my staff or some people I work for, this or that. God just made it that blank so that it can be that generic also because I need it on all the fronts. I need the intervention of God between me and my family. I need the intervention of God between me and my siblings. There are so many areas of businesses that I'm involved in that God must show his face. 
Is somebody hearing what I'm saying this morning? I need God to intervene in this church. We need God to intervene in Nigeria. So it's not about the place, but about what God wants to do. But he told me, the dropping of the word gecko, that un, 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 unpleasant and unneeded creature, the spoiler, is one that must be resisted and chased out. And I first said, thank you, God, that you did not allow the thing to drop inside and spoil it. Instead of spoiling me, I will spoil it. Everything that wants to spoil you this year, you will spoil in the name of Jesus. And there are scriptures for that. And the Lord started to draw my heart to scriptures. Exodus chapter 12. Let's read verse 31 to 34 very quickly. We're going to be rounding up here to pray. And he called for Moses and Aaron by night and said, Rise up and get you forth from among my people, both you and the children of Israel, and go serve the Lord as ye have said. 32. Also take your flocks and your hearts, as ye have said, and be gone, and bless me also. Who was speaking there? Oh, okay, thank you. You know it. And the Egyptians were urgent upon the people that they might send them out of the land in haste. For they said, we be all dead men. 34. And the people, and listen to this, they took their dough before it was leavened, their kneading troughs being bound up in their clothes upon their shoulders. When I read, when I remember 34 there, I said, ah, that is it. Did you get the picture of the children of Israel? You know the, 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 the kneading trough. That is the place of the supply of food, isn't it? It was like that pot of, uh, of soup at the back of that car. So God is saying what is required for your prosperity, for your feeding, for your well-being. Like I did with the children of Israel. I bound that thing up to them so that they would not lack any good thing. Did you get that? And while it was bound, they were on a mission. They were moving. That was the thing that that car was to do in my life and would do in my life and in your life also to get you to the journey wherever it is, whether it's of your family, whether it's of this church, whether it's of Nigeria, to get us to the place where God wants us to be as the children of Israel eventually got to the promised land. Are you making spiritual connections? Dealing with the work gecko was very, very easy. Psalm 18. And that's why we're going to round up. This is what God is going to do concerning every intruder in your life from now in the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter where it may want to come from. It does not matter where it may want to manifest. But let me tell you what God will do to every intruder in the system of God in your life. Psalm 18, verse 45. The stranger shall fade away and be afraid out of their close places. Every stranger, in whatever form they will come, in whatever way they will want to manifest, for as long as they are strangers, who will give me the definition of stranger here? We, we will spend too much time. Everything, every being, anyone, that is an object of contrary disposition to the plan of God in your life is a stranger. In anything you are doing, anything, animate or inanimate, known or unknown, cajoled or you, you try to kick him, it doesn't matter. For as long as that thing, that person, is opposed to the plan of God. That's a stranger. And what did the Bible say the strangers will experience? The strangers will fade away. Say fade away. Strangers fade away. In every system of my life, fade away. Strangers fade away. Fade away from my business. Fade away from my body. Fade away from my family. Strangers, fade away from this church. Fade away from Nigeria. Fade away from where you should not stand to oppose the will of God in my life. Is somebody getting what God is saying? 
and they will be afraid out of their close places. It's a very decisive 2019 we're in. The battle line is drawn. And you better choose where you'll be. You better be on the side of God so that God will be quick to manifest these things that he's saying he wants to do in our lives. I'm subscribing to it. I feel weak. And I thank God that I feel weak of myself so that the excellency of God will appear in this weak vessel. This year is a glorious year. This year is a mighty year. You will see the death of the Egyptians upon the seashore when it's all over in the name of Jesus. Did somebody get something in this message? Did God speak to you? Is God speaking to us? Go back and interpret this thing according to how you want God to give you the understanding. I just woke up and I understood it. I just said, God, if you had just connected it to one thing or the other, I'll be fixated. God is saying, I'm telling you the totality of your life. Use it as you please. And I tell him, I will not make a mistake about this. Strangers will fade away. And they will be chased out with fear because they will be afraid out of their secret places. Before we take it too far, if you are here this morning and you are not in the covenant, you don't know Jesus Christ, I want to plead with you. Come to this altar now. Come and meet with God. The one who is able to make your 2019 glorious, fruitful, and make it the beginning of the remaining of your life that would just be wonderful to give God praise about. Who amongst us here want that kind of a life? You want God to bless you? You want him to minister to you afresh? To show you who he is? Put up your hand wherever you are. I would expect that many of our first-timers uh, some who had not been with us before to understand that this is what, what God wants to do. Put up your hand if you want God to touch you this way. You might have been coming before. Hoshas, please help me. I want you to come to the altar now. It's a time to pray for some people who want to meet with God and who want to ask that this year will be a glorious year. Please come. I'm waiting that God will touch you. God told me that he wants to save people. He said he wants to reach people. He says he wants to bless people. You don't need to kneel down, please. We just want to help you to connect with this God. Anybody else coming? If you're coming, come very quickly. Come very quickly. Come very quickly. Come. God told me you'll be here, that you need to get this connection for your 2019. Your life will not remain the same again. Your life would not be dull again. Your life will not be harassed again. Your life will not be hopeless again. Because God will manifest himself to you. I'm still waiting for some more people. Don't postpone it. Don't postpone it. Don't postpone it. Somebody's trying to postpone it. Don't postpone it. That is what God is asking me to tell you. Don't postpone it. It is good here. It is good now. It can be done now. You can find him now. One more person come. One more person come. One more person come. It can be good now. Don't postpone it. Make it a year that God will manifest himself in your life. Don't postpone it. That's what God is saying. Church, let us rise up at this time. Just pray for these people. And we're going to be praying for ourselves. Every war gecko in your life must die. Every war gecko in your life must die. Whatever it is, it is God that knows, not me. Start to pray. While I pray for these people. What a wonderful morning you have come. All you need to do now is just say, Jesus is unto you, I have come. Help me. My life has been hopeless. I cannot do it myself. But I now know that Jesus will help me if I connect with him. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. Forgive me, Jesus. Come into my life. Make me whole. Make me born again. Connect me with the covenant of God. My life will not be the same again. Father, I pray for these ones, oh God, this morning. As they make personal confessions of accepting Jesus Christ into their lives, they will not be the same again, oh Lord. As they enter into the kingdom of God, make them children of God who will serve God, who would indeed carry forth the banner of God, that God will be glorified. Father, thank you because you do this. In Jesus' mighty name, we do pray. You're just going to look to your right, and these brethren will lead you to prayers of confession.
that will welcome you into the family of God and you will forever be there until you see Jesus face to face. Put your hands together for these wonderful people. Ah, thank you. Thank you. This is one applause I like to cut short. I still like us to pray. Pray in tongues. Let us pray in tongues for one or two minutes. My time is up. But just pray. Because you may not really know how to interpret what you have heard. Just go ahead and pray in tongues. The spirit of God inside of you will properly locate what is happening and will help you. Shala braba kasa tababo zeka kabo zede elika bori bos kantari la brostada rakita staida kuli kemos toka le shede mason tori kebos tanderi vrakati kike kuli kuzkinda ai kuba brashadiba la boso to kibonze elika mante kumbi brekistoda la kista uki were shinda braka sodo brokinne. Lebreshinde bro sinda brakas tende makisa tabo shiri baba brabo soto kobonie le mukonto skaida lama shanda skiri revos tonda. Father, help us. Of ourselves, we can do nothing, but we command every war gecko wherever they are in our lives die. That our lives will enter into the fullness of the journey forward, with the plenty and the prosperity that you plan at all levels of our lives. And that God's name will be glorified. Father, I pray for your church at this time, O oh God. Give each one of us understanding. Let your name be exalted. In Jesus' name we pray.